The first scene begins with a narration, stating that when a fox reaches the age of 100, it can transform into a beautiful woman or a man with decent powers. However, a 1,000-year-old fox receives the sky's blessing and transforms into a celestial fox with the abilities of a powerful shaman, allowing it to see miles ahead. The scene shifts to 1999 Yao Go where a family is driving back home. On their way, the mother gives her little daughter a toy as a birthday present, which makes the little girl happy. A few moments later, the highway lights go off, leaving the road dark. Soon after, something appears in front of their car, causing an accident. The car flips upside down, damaging the little girl's toy. After a while, the little girl, Nam Jia, regains consciousness and discovers her parents hanging upside down. She somehow manages to untie the seatbelt and free herself. Upon doing so, she notices her parents' soul staring at her from outside the car, freaking her out. Just then, Jia awakens in the house to find her parents watching television. She's relieved to discover that it was all just a dream. Following that, she grabs her toy, but surprisingly, it's been damaged in the same way she saw in her dream. She also discovers a blood stain on her dress, making her perplexed. She then asks her mother for some walnut cookies, prompting the latter to start looking for them. Soon, Jia follows her mother to the kitchen, where she picks up some scissors. Her mother informs her that the cookies might have been finished, to which Jia responds that there shouldn't be any cookies at home, because she's allergic to them. The woman claims she forgot, but Jia replies that her mother would never forget because she's a doctor. With this, she stabs the lady with the scissors and inquires about her mother. However, the woman also fights back and a brawl ensues between the two. Luckily, before any damage is done, Jia dashes into her room and locks the door from inside. Shortly after, the two evils, who pose as her parents, knock on the door, scaring the life out of her. A few moments later, she notices a man named Li Yun standing in front of her with a red umbrella. Li Yun uses his magic and tells her to forget everything she witnessed earlier. Following this, she finds herself back at the accident site, where the police are investigating the car. Jia is heartbroken because her parents have vanished. 21 years later, Li Yan wakes up in his mansion, gets ready, and walks out with his red umbrella. He heads towards a wedding venue, where the people outside wonder why it's raining despite the clear sky. Li Yan responds that the fox is getting married. He then enters the wedding venue and meets the bride. Seeing him, the bride wonders how he found her to which he responds that she can't just run away with a bloodthirsty past. Hearing this, the bride tries to persuade him to not kill her because she no longer causes harm to others. The bride is revealed to be a fox who now wants to live as a normal human, whereas Li Yun is also a nine-tailed fox who punishes bad foxes. Despite this, Li Yun claims that she must die, prompting her to pull out her claws to attack him. But when Li Yan easily blocks her, the helpless bride begs for one last meeting with her fiancé, to which he agrees. In the following scene, we see a grown-up Jia, who's writing a script about supernatural entities. Her co-worker, Jae Huan, doesn't appear to be satisfied with her writings because he's terrified of ghosts and monsters. They both go to the same wedding venue to gather information for the script. At the wedding, Li Yan approaches the bride to execute her but she attacks him again. However, he easily overpowers her and stabs her to death. Before fading away, she begs him to erase all of her happy memories from her husband's mind. Outside, Jia overhears people discussing the wedding's cancellation. Just then, she notices Li Yan passing by, but she's unable to recall anything. Later, Jia and Jie Huan enter the wedding hall to examine the bride's dress. Jae Huan claims that the bride has fled, but Jia suspects that there's something else. She then asks Jae Huan to obtain the CCTV footage while she continues her investigation. Shortly after, she notices some hair in the bride's dress and takes it to the forensic lab for further examination. The forensic doctor claims that it's the hair of a red fox. Jia believes that red foxes are extinct, to which the doctor informs her about a fox reviving project that began in 2012. She still doesn't believe it because those foxes have GPS trackers and haven't yet arrived in Seoul. 
Jia appears to be aware of all this because she worked as an assistant director for an animal show for two years. As soon as she leaves, the doctor tries to reach someone via call, but fails. On the other hand, Li Yan is sitting in a park thinking about his love when he hears a little girl cry. He learns that her balloon has flown away, so he uses his magic to retrieve it. A young boy notices this and inquires whether he's an alien, to which he replies that he's a 1,000-year-old nine-tailed fox. The boy then asks as to why he's here, and Li Yan replies that he's waiting for his first love. After conversing for a while, Li Yan heads towards the Afterlife Immigration Office, where he meets a lady who works there. It's revealed that the lady is also a fox who's been working there for 600 years. Li Yan expresses his frustration for having to follow orders for a thousand years, but the lady reminds him that he wasn't forced to abandon his life as a mountain spirit and live that way. He was the one who chose that life and signed a contract in exchange for the resurrection of his love, A. Yum. Following this, the lady asks if he wants to cancel the agreement, but Li Yan, with no other options, decides to keep going. Just then, the forensic doctor calls Li Yan and invites him for a meeting. The doctor is also revealed to be a fox. Meanwhile, Jia watches the CCTV footage and notices the person with the red umbrella. Seeing this, she realizes he's the same person she saw at the wedding. Elsewhere, Li Yan meets with the forensic doctor, who tells him everything about Jia. They also learn from the news that the person with the red umbrella is being searched. Despite this, Li Yan doesn't appear to be worried. At the office, a guy arrives to meet Ji Ya, claiming to have seen the person with the red umbrella. When Ji Ya inquires further, the guy responds that the person is a monster who never ages or dies. Initially, she doesn't believe him and decides to leave, but the guy claims to have seen the person in Yao Goke. Following this, the man leaves, and before getting into his car, he changes his avatar, indicating that he too is a fox with supernatural abilities. He then calls Li Yan and asks for a meeting. That night, Jia goes to the bus station, as instructed by the guy earlier. Upon reaching there, she sees a drunk man and a high school girl, Su Young, waiting for the bus. A few moments later, the bus arrives and Su Young boards. However, when it's Ji Ah's turn, the drunk guy holds her feet, because of which she misses the bus. Just then, Ji Ah notices the person with the red umbrella on the bus, but now it's too late. Despite all that happened, a kind Ji Ah carries the drunk man on her back and heads to drop him off. Surprisingly, she discovers that the man is heavier than he appears, and she's unable to detect his heartbeat. After a while, the man gets off her back and claims that he's already paid her for it. Perplexed, Jia stops a taxi, and when she turns around, the drunk man vanishes. She then follows the previous bus route, only to discover that the bus has been in an accident. Jia is shocked when she realizes that the accident site is the same location in Yao Go Gei where her parents went missing 21 years ago. She gets on the bus and discovers that everyone has died except for Su Young. As a result, Jia dials 911 and rushes the teenager to the hospital. She also informs the detective that one of the bus passengers has gone missing. The next day, Jia pays a visit to Su Young in the hospital and inquires about the incident. She also shows Li Yan's picture, which frightens her. Su Young claims that he'll come to kill her soon. Hearing this, Jia calls the detective for backup, and just then, she notices Li Yan in the hospital. She then approaches him, and the two of them start conversing. Jia asks him if he's there to kill the victim, but he doesn't reveal anything. During the conversation, Jia tries to get his fingerprint, but he doesn't touch anything. Before departing, she throws her leather bag at him, saying that it contains her business card. However, Li Yan tosses the bag back, claiming that he won't meet her again. With this, she successfully manages to obtain his fingerprints. Later at night, Su Young screams aloud, and Ji Ah rushes towards her. The teenager mentions that she must leave the hospital or risk being killed. Following this, Ji Ah takes her to her place and lets her stay for the night. Meanwhile, Li Yan arrives at the hospital, but he's unable to find Su Young. The nurse gives him a message that Jia had left for him. Upon reading it, he storms out of the hospital. 
Back at home, Jia awakens at midnight and notices Su Young in front of her, scaring her. Su Young informs her that she now recalls every detail of the previous incident. She then begins to explain that the bus went through a tunnel and that the person with the red umbrella attempted to kill her. But in reality, Su Young is revealed to be a fox who murdered all the passengers on the bus. She also faced Li Yian, causing him to be injured. Jia suspects she's lying, so she grabs a piece of glass and puts it on Su Young's neck, demanding the truth. After this, Su Young reverts to her original identity, which is the same guy who approached her in her office. Surprised, Jia inquires about the real Su Young, to which the guy responds that he ate her. At the same time, Li Yian arrives and the two foxes begin fighting. During the fight, Jia learns that the two are brothers. She appears to have cleverly set up cameras in her place, recording their fight. Soon after, the guy, Li Rong, warns Li Yan that if he's unable to discover the truth about Jia, he will murder her. As soon as Li Rong leaves, Jia asks who they are, but Li Yan uses his magic, telling her to forget about him. In the next scene, Jia is in her office when she receives a call from the detective, informing her of the fingerprint. Later that evening, Li Yan returns home and discovers the footage of his fight with his brother. He also finds Jia on the balcony and approaches her, asking if she still remembers everything. Jia claims that his magic had no effect on her. She also shows him the pen drive containing the real footage and tells him to come get it. As he comes closer, she jumps off the balcony. Li Yian, who has the ability to fly, also jumps to her aid. When he saves her, she's convinced that he isn't human. Following this, Jia says that she's been waiting for him and stabs a syringe into his neck. The scene then shifts to the past when Li Yian was the master of the mountain spirit and had the ability to control rain and wind. One day while he's sleeping, a little girl named A Yim gently touches him. She introduces herself, and from that day onwards, she begins to pay him frequent visits. As time passes, they spend more time together. Eventually, A Yim grows up and they fall in love with each other. A Yim always carried a red umbrella with her, which is why Li Yan is carrying the same in the present. Unfortunately, their love story ends in tragedy as A Yim dies. The Death God is sailing A Yim's soul through Samdo River, but at the same time, Li Yan uses his power to freeze the water. Despite this, he's unable to stop her. He then tells her to be reincarnated and promises to find her again. In the following years, Li Yan meets a number of girls who resemble A Yim, but none of them are the real one. Back at the present, Li Yan regains consciousness and finds himself in Jia's place. As soon as he wakes up, he asks for her death wish. Before that, Jia requests that he listen to her. He agrees on the condition that if she's unable to persuade him, he will take away her eyesight for seeing something she shouldn't have seen. Jia then brings up the incident from 21 years ago and inquires about her parents. However, Li Yan is uninterested in her past. Enraged, Jia starts blackmailing him with the pen drive, but Li Yan simply blinds one of her eyes with his magic. Following that, he says that before threatening others, one should be in a position of power. When he's about to blind her next eye, she says she's simply taking chances and not threatening him. She then drops the pen drive into a cup of water, claiming that when a fox owes someone a favor, they must repay it. She also promises to erase everything she saw and heard, but only after she finds her parents. Later that night, Jia is overcome with emotion as she watches a video of her childhood with her parents. After finishing the video, she turns off the television, but the screen still shows her parents. Her mother throws a skull at her, freaking her out and making her scream. Simultaneously, she awakens, indicating that it was just a dream. The next day, Li Yan goes to the afterlife immigration office and asks the lady if A Yum has reincarnated. When the lady remains silent, he again asks if the person can be reborn with the same face. Hearing this, the lady claims that reincarnation is random and that A Yum can also be a boy. Despite this, Li Yan is unconcerned because all he wants is more time with his love. Following this, he asks her to find the information about Jia's parents. 
On the other hand, Jia is at work, where her co-workers share their nightmares. Just then, one of the co-workers receives a call informing her of her mother's death, just as she had dreamt of. Later, Li Yan summons Jia to a restaurant to inform her that her parents' names aren't on the death list, indicating that they're still alive. However, he's unaware of their precise location. After a while, he decides to leave and never see her again, but Jia requests additional assistance in locating her parents. Li Yan tells her to stay away from his world because it's not designed for her. Despite this, she assures him that she will not cause any trouble, persuading him not to disappear. He then asks if she really wants to see his world. Later that evening, Jia returns to the studio to retrieve her stuff, and while there, she throws some coins in front of the guy who's assisting her in locating her belongings. When the man notices the coins, he begins to transform into a monster and starts eating those coins. Jia is surprised to witness this, and when the man tries to attack her, Li Yan comes to her aid. He then gets ready to execute the man, but the latter begs him not to. The man reveals that Li Rong sent him with information that he'll have more to feed on in the human world. Taken aback, Jia inquires about the man, to which Li Yan responds that he's a bulgassery, a legendary creature that feeds on nightmares. Taking advantage of the distraction, the Bulgassery captures Jia and threatens to kill her, but fortunately, Li Yan hurls coins at him, knocking the beast out. He then tells Jia to return back to her own world, as she doesn't fit in there. The scene then shifts to Jiangsan Point in the Yellow Sea, where some men are fishing. While they're at it, they come across a human skull with a golden tooth. After seeing the tooth, they realize that the skull belongs to their friend, Mr. Seo. They then contact the police, who initiate further investigation. Shortly after, Mr. Seo's daughter arrives and gets devastated by the news. Simultaneously, Li Rong approaches Mr. Seo's daughter and offers her a handkerchief. On the other hand, Li Yan goes to meet Li Rong in order to warn him to stay away from his love. During their conversation, Li Rong expresses his rage at Li Yan for abandoning his position, as well as his own brother, for the sake of love. The next day, Jia and Li Yan travel to Mr. Seo's daughter's place to investigate the skull case, hoping to find some clues about Jia's parents and Li Yan's love. Upon reaching there, Jia interviews Mr. Seo's daughter to gather more about the case. She also approaches several people for the investigation, but nobody is willing to talk to her. Following this, the two walk towards the forest where Li Yan uses his power to retrieve information from the forest spirits. A few moments later, a guardian tree spirit appears and greets Li Yan because he was the former master of the forest. The spirit reveals that something evil arrived on the island riding a typhoon and drove all the spirits away. She also claims that she wanted to leave but couldn't because her feet are bound to the tree. Hearing this, Jia cuts the rope and releases the spirit. In return, the spirit suggests she go to the north side to get her answers. They then travel north, and Jia finds the place to be familiar. She pulls out a photograph and realizes that her parents visited there when she was in her mother's womb. Later that night, Jia mocks and laughs at Li Yan. Seeing her laugh, he's reminded of A Yum and wonders if Jia is his love. He uses his magic to check if she's his love, but soon discovers that she isn't. The next morning, Li Yan shows a rare plant to some elderly village women and persuades them to speak with Jia. The women reveal that the skull case has occurred several times in the past. After learning of this, Jia contacts the detective, who informs her that the first case occurred in 1954. While on the phone, she notices Mr. Seo's friend running in fear. When she tries to approach him, he attacks her because he believes she's a ghost. The man tries to attack again, but Li Yan saves her. Shortly after, Li Yan applies some remedies to Jia's injured shoulder, but to his surprise, her skin color begins to change. Just then, Jia grabs his neck and reveals that she's the one he's been looking for. She then inquires as to why he murdered her. The scene then shifts 12 hours back, where one of Mr. Seo's friends is extremely thirsty. Out of desperation, he keeps his head inside the toilet and drowns to death. 
Later, Jia arrives and discovers a clump of hair from the dead body's mouth. Li Yun tells her that the hair has a similar smell from Mr. Seo's place. Just then, a seacoast shop owner arrives there and reveals that Mr. Seo and three of his friends were stranded in the middle of the sea for 28 days, with only three of them returning. With this, Li Yun deduces that more people will die, so Jia rushes out to rescue them. Meanwhile, Mr. Seo's daughter, Pyung Hee, is seen performing some rituals near the sea. She has a picture that consists of her father's three friends, one of whom appears to have died recently. On the other hand, we see Mr. Seo's other friend, who appears to be scared and hides inside a tent. He hears Mr. Seo's voice, and when he comes out of the tent, he notices a person without a head standing behind him, which causes him to flee in terror. In the following scene, we're introduced to Mr. Seo's final friend, who survived for 28 days. In the survivor's place, we see some paintings of the Dragon King. Mr. Seo's next friend is seen eating in an extremely hungry manner. A few moments later, Li Yun and Jia arrive at his house for further investigation. Initially, the man asks them to leave, but Li Yun twists his arm and threatens to reveal what happened in the boat for 28 days. The man then reveals that the three of them banded together and ate Mr. Seo's flesh to survive in the sea. Just then, the man begins to choke and eventually dies. Jia examines his mouth and finds a smattering of hair, just like in the previous case. On the sea coast, Pyong Hee is approached by Li Rong, who claims that her wish is about to come true because there's only one guy left. At the afterlife immigration office, the lady, Taluipa, appears enraged because people who aren't on the death list are dying. Meanwhile, Jia and Li Yan visit the tent where one of the survivors has previously hidden. There, she discovers the same Dragon King's painting, and when she compares it to the previous ones, she notices that the dragon in the current one lacks feet. According to Jia, the dragon without feet is a snake named Imugi. In the next scene, we see Li Rong walking through the forest and coming across an abandoned well. A short time later, a woman in a white dress approaches him. They talk about resurrecting the creatures inside the well, for which they must sacrifice someone's life. It's then revealed that Li Yun once faced a powerful Imugi, which he killed and buried inside the well. The woman warns him that resurrecting the Imugi will endanger Li Yun's life. The woman then inquires as to why he wants to risk his own brother's life, to which Li Rong responds that he hates him. On the other hand, Li Yan asks Jia to return home because she's sensed something bad. However, she refuses to leave without finding out about her parents. Following this, Jia goes to Pyong Hee's house, where she finds her reading a book. When she notices the book, she realizes she isn't Pyong Hee. When questioned, she transforms back into her original avatar, who's none other than Li Rong. This makes Jia realize that he is the one who murdered all the survivors. Li Rong then compliments Jia on her intelligence and decides to reward her. He takes her parents' picture and offers to assist her in locating them. Despite this, Jia declines his offer because she believes foxes don't accumulate debt. Before leaving, he warns her not to put too much faith in Li Yun, because once he gets what he wants, she will beg for mercy. In the meantime, Li Yun visits the seaside shop owner's place and discovers the same Dragon King's painting. He demands that the painting be explained, and the shopkeeper responds that the Dragon King calms the storm. Furthermore, he claims that one of the village ladies bought them from the mainland for each and every house. Before departing, the shop owner informs him that Li Rong came to inquire about the location of Pyong Hee. Hearing this, Li Yan runs up to Jia, who informs him that Li Rong has just left. She advises him to leave because his brother's planning something big against him, but Li Yan is waiting for the same. During the conversation, he shares everything about his love. Elsewhere, the woman in the white dress begins the ritual. Meanwhile, Jia's co-worker informs her about the similar skull cases that occurred in the past. Jia then notes all the past dates when the incidents occurred. Upon investigating those dates, she discovers that the incidents happened according to the lunar calendar on the same date, July 15th. 
Coincidentally, the present date is also the 15th of July. While she's on the phone, she notices the last survivor fleeing in terror, continuing the previous scene. The survivor attacks Jia, but Li Yan protects her from further harm. While Li Yan applies remedies to her shoulder, she grabs his neck, revealing that she is the one who he's been waiting for. She also asks why he killed her. The scene then shifts to the past, where Li Yan attempted to murder A Yum. A few moments later, Jia comes back to normalcy and has no memory of what has just happened. Soon after, Li Rong appears and begins attacking Jia, but Li Yan saves her. He then tells her to flee while he fights his brother. After running for a while, Jia notices a house and decides to go there. It turns out that the woman in the white dress owns the house. Jia approaches the woman and shows her a picture of her parents, inquiring about them. Strangely, the woman invites her to her home and offers a cup of water. However, Jia does not drink it because she doesn't consume anything from strangers. During the conversation, the woman lies about her parents, but Jia is able to sense it. As a result, she decides to walk away, but soon collapses due to the poisonous incense that have been lit inside the house. Elsewhere, Li Rong reveals that he only kept Li Yan engaged in the fight so that Ji Ya could be kidnapped. He also mentions that Ji Ya will be sacrificed soon for successfully completing the ritual. Hearing this, Li Yan rushes in search of her. Meanwhile, the woman ties a rope around Ji Ya and prepares for the ritual. Eventually, it gets dark, and Li Yan, being a former master, orders nature to assist him in leading to Ji Ya. A few moments later, a swarm of fireflies appears and lead him to Jia. The woman drags Jia to the abandoned well and attempts to sacrifice her life. But just then, Li Yan arrives at the scene. However, he's unable to cross the woman's borderline. This enrages him, and as a result, his nine tails emerge, causing rain and erasing the borderline. In his rage, he unleashes a thunderstorm on the woman, causing her to vanish. After this, he saves Jia from the well and wraps her wound with a scarf. Jia is unable to walk due to her injury, so Li Yan carries her back. Back in the forest, Jia's blood appears to have entered the well. The same night, Jia is having a drink to calm herself down, and Li Yan soon joins her. During this time, she questions him on why he keeps saving her. She also inquires if she has anything he's been looking for. Hearing this, Li Yan is reminded of A Yum, but he does not reveal anything. Following this, she thanks him for saving her multiple times and promises to repay the favor. At midnight, the villagers gather, go to the abandoned well, and look in it. Just then, we hear a baby crying and see Li Rong handing the baby over to an unknown person. The next day, Li Yan is about to leave the village when he learns that Pyong He has sacrificed her leg to Li Rong in order to curse her father's killers. Li Yan consoles her by telling her not to curse anyone from now on. Shortly after, Jia arrives and informs them that the entire village is empty.